Hey YouTube, I uh, just wanted to do a response to Theo Warner's videos and comments about decadence. Um, because they didn't... In some way, even in the conversation, there were, it's something about uh, the distinction that he makes between decadent philosophy and non-decadent philosophy didn't uh, quite sit with me as well as, um, as well as I would like. I think I sort of figured out why um, and that is, that's that if we refer to something as decadent philosophy, then it, it follows that there is such a thing as non-decadent philosophy. Um, and furthermore, to use it as a pejorative, uh, more or less assumes that, that we are not decadent and you are, um, and that concept of non-decadence is what I'm dodgy about. Um, I think uh, if we if we go back to the example, and you can certainly criticize me for criticizing you based on my own example, but uh, in the conversation that we had, I uh, kept going back to uh, Voltaire's story about, I believe it's in Candide, the, the philosophers standing around talking uh, about the ethics of... of this person who's drowning, you know, should we save this person? Well, what if they're meant to die? Is it interfering with God's plan? Blah, blah, blah. And in the meantime, uh, the guy drowns and dies. Um, and this seems like an example of, of decadent philosophy. Um, in that it, it, uh, precludes duty. Um, uh, the, the pleasure of philosophy is, is, um, sort of blinds people to their, their immediate duty of saving the, the person that's drowning. Um, but um, there seems to be a problem with this. Well, first of all, it seems that the only way to, to make the distinction between a decadent philosophy and a non-decadent philosophy is when the chips are down, right? Um, you know, I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong, and, I, and Theo, I don't think you'll disagree with me in saying that duty and happiness can, can coincide. Um, but the moment where you know that something is going to be non-decadent is, is um, when they're not, you know. In other words, when shit goes down, uh, do you, which do you choose, duty or happiness? It's, it's these moments that reveal, uh, you could say, uh, decadence or non-decadence. Um, but the problem that I have, or the, what makes me uneasy, is, is the fact that, you know, isn't there always someone drowning? You know, isn't there always something uh, terrible happening which we should be dedicating thought to and time to figuring out and sorting out? Um, you know, we if I'm, even if I'm doing something, uh, good for the community within which I live, well, I could be doing something good for the situation in, say, the Congo, you know, I, I could be dedicating my thoughts elsewhere. My point is that, that it, it seems to me that if, if we orient ourselves to the world and we do that sincerely, um, there are a multiplicity of duties, um, and the selection of a duty to commit ourselves to is, is innately an exclusion of, of all of the, the other duties that we could potentially commit ourselves to, even if they might be more, um, uh, you know, alleviating worse suffering or, or creating a better situation in the world, you know. Um, so, the fact that there are a multiplicity of potential duties seems to me then to to leave us in a situation where there's there's not decadence and non-decadence, but rather there are decadences. Um, some decadences are more open and oriented towards the world, and other decadences are, are less open and oriented towards the world. And furthermore, 
uh, it seems to me that the absolute worst moral situation that you can put yourself in is to label yourself as being non-decadent. Um, because it seems to me to be uh, um, sort of a protection, a, a defense mechanism in preservation of the ego, or preserva the preservation of um, the self as self as a moral entity, right? The, um, the story, it's a preservation of the story that we tell ourselves about ourselves. Um, and, and therefore, actually turns ourselves away from the world. The moment you, you label yourself as non-decadent, you end up in the most radical decadence that you could possibly be. And, um, so then what's, what's, you know, the first objection that, that, that I'm sure you'll, you'll come up with is, you know, isn't this all really decadent, right? Um, you know, you're sort of formalizing these, these issues and, and, <clears throat> and, whatever and and I would say no and the reason why is that under this light um, the problem doesn't become how do I become a non-decadent thinker um, this is actually in our world uh, an impossibility but um, the problem then becomes how to orient thought in such a way as to, with the goal of changing the world so that there might be such a thing as a non-decadent thinker, right? There's a utopian call present in, in this problem, um, uh, which is not a bad thing. I don't, I don't, and when I say utopian, I don't, I don't mean to say that we should be, you know, constructing some, some vision of a perfect world or something. But um, uh, I don't I don't mean it in that limited sense. But what I mean is that um, we should be mobilizing thought. We should be we should be thinking a thought that entails praxis, right? And this this term means the moment where theory realizes itself in practice. Um, uh, so thought, in some way, needs to be receptive to the world uh, entirely, but I think it should actually be oriented towards towards praxis. It needs to be oriented towards um, uh, the birth of a situation within which these... Um, failures that are are necessary, just parts of being human in the world in which we live, um, the, the, the necessary inability to live up to uh, any reasonable moral standard just by the fact that we are in this world, um, um, to alleviate that, <laughs> um, this is this is it seems to me to be the closest thing to to what what we might call a, a non decadence is the realization of our own decadence, and then the attempt to think in such a way that we can point the way towards um, alleviating that situation. Um, and you know that's obviously. Um, a project that's been um, taken on by by a number of, of thinkers, but I think in some way it's it's the only way to it's the only way to to address these issues in in a serious way. Um. Um. And yeah, so so that's my my deconstruction of, of the term decadence. Um, and I'd love to hear a response. All right, comment, subscribe. I hope you guys are well out there and have a good day.